welcome to Interceptor Beyond Podcast. My name is Arthur, and today on the episode we have an Austrian band from Linz, Perso Caraman. Recorded just before the show at the Arena venue. Don't forget to follow this podcast if you dig it, and rate this show on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Anyways, let's talk to Perso Caravan. Hi, my name is Bertram, and I play guitar in the band Parasol Caravan. I play guitar in Parasol Caravan as well, and my name is Richard. I discovered you some time ago. Uh, I discovered the song Nemesis, my favorite song of Parasol Caravan. It's from the latest album, which was released in 2019, I think. Yes, that's correct. First of all, how are you doing? You've been traveling. Uh, yesterday you were where? Uh, yesterday we played in Salzburg at the Rock House Bar. Yeah. And it was a really cool, crowded night and a perfect uh, start for our tour. Really enjoyed it. Great. Crowd. And uh, tomorrow you're in Linz. Yeah, tomorrow we're going to play actually our last show um, for our final return to space tour. Because after that tour, we are going to yeah return to space. And no one knows if we're drifting there like an endless drifting wreck and just floating there and never return back to Earth or whatever. Yeah, it's going to be our last show. That's Wait a second. The last tour, you mean the band is, uh, is kaput or what? Oh no, we're, we're not the solving, I think, but uh, I think. at least we are taking a very extended break from break. You had a break before, guys, <laughs> like during <laughs> Corona and stuff. Yeah, 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 but it's but it's uh, another kind of break. It's uh, just to to have more time to focus on the the things that yeah matter around the band, in the band, and to. Yeah, to, to, just to clear our minds and know where the band is exactly at the moment. Yes, we just restarted. Yeah. We just we released like two albums. Uh, like one was in 2015, yeah. and uh, one was in 2019. We're just starting, you know. Like don't, don't, don't stop. Uh, I mean, the music is great. I like your yeah. music, you know. Your the Nemesis song was on my Spotify playlist for a long time. So, yeah, thanks. We like the music as well. It's it's not uh, that we are. Uh, uh, it's not that we're quitting um, because we don't like the music or that we uh, don't like each other anymore. We enjoy uh, the music very much. We, yeah. uh, we like playing live, we like rehearsing, but it's just that, that we are in a point in our lives where everyone's getting children. And, and I was about to ask, it's family, you're getting yeah. old. Guys, you're getting old. Getting old or uh, to the point where we decided, do we really want to become the next dead rock band or uh, like the next Nickelback? Or uh, do we just want to take a break <laughs> for, I don't know, how many years and then uh, just focus on songwriting maybe and just not play live anymore? Um, that's, that's the thing that, that we were talking uh, about. Um, yeah. So have you made it up your mind or is it just your... I mean, if you're telling me, yeah. it means that you already discussed it quite for a long time. Yeah. Actually, so when, it's, it's yeah. official. Yeah, yeah. It's official. Those are our last kicks. Yeah. So. Yeah. But when did you decide... Well, first of all, you never... I don't think you mentioned that online anywhere that it's your last kicks. Of course we did. Really? Uh, that's all the promotion we did for the last three months was like, guys, it's the last three shows that we're going to play. Uh, after that, there are no more live shows. <laughs> I didn't get that because I thought that uh, like uh, like the Wolf Mother canceled and then you yeah. like decided to play now, you know, like yeah. and that's... Actually, was the Wolf Mother canceling was one of the main reasons or it was just like an additional? No, that just was an unhappy coincidence. Yeah. Uh, we, we really were looking forward to that one, but... Yeah, didn't happen. Yeah, but it really, I, as I said, I didn't notice that there was some, okay, maybe I did bad research, okay, maybe. <laughs> but it, it's like not, not like in the posters everywhere, like it's the last, last, last or whatever. You mentioned actually, that, actually, you mentioned that casually. It, it, it's not very, very... Uh, and I'm heartbroken. Uh, I'm heartbroken. That's it, folks. Um, it's saying uh, the last trip of the fast turnouts. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Tour. For my, for my, um, for, for uh, uh, <laughs> you know, like in my defense and in yeah. defense of everybody, it's really small font. You can't see shit, <laughs> and it's like really yeah, abstract. That's because um, we we didn't want to make it like final, final. So we just want to keep. I think it's bullshit. A bit I think it's bullshit. I think you're bullshitting me. It's not the last one. You're just saying it's the last one. So that the, the third the, album that you're yeah. working on right now, I'm pretty Tonight's sure. Tonight's not the last one. Tomorrow in Linz is the last one. <laughs> okay. No, we actually don't have a single new song since. <laughs> Jesus, since, this is since, horrible. Since this album, we, we haven't worked on anything. We just rehearsed. And that's, that's one of the reasons why we said it's. Uh, it's not working anymore in the, at the moment because uh, we're just rehearsing to, to play live. But and wait. we just meet in, in the rehearsal room to, to rehearse our live set. We don't do any new numbers or something. And so we said we take a break from playing live. 
or finish playing. Like when Ultimate did it? Now. When did realization come uh, during the Corona? Because I mean, you released the uh, number 2019. You're like pumped up, all going well. Corona hits, and then slowly goes down, like everybody yeah. else. People are like going mental and stuff. But when you made this decision, it's really important for me. Yeah. Actually, it just uh, happened um, this uh, last year when we played uh, just a couple of shows. Late uh, summer, I think. Late summer. Late summer. Yeah, and we rehearsed really a lot. I mean, more than we usually did because we were thinking, hey, we're going to open up for Wolfmara. We have to be really prepared. We want to yeah, just play a really cool set. And then we had some, some shows that were also really good, um, to be honest. Um, but it was just like this... Um, why are we doing this at the moment? We're just rehearsing for the next show, um, but we don't have the time to focus on new tracks. And it's uh, been three years since the last release and it was Corona and shit and everything, but we didn't have the time to focus just on the, the thing that's most important for us. And that's uh, just playing and writing songs together. Yeah. And uh, during those three years, um, yeah, we all got children. Uh, we all had Congrats. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, no, and, the, and the, the, the focus in the band just uh, was shifting somewhere else. Um, yeah, and so we, we said, okay, it's either um, just playing more and more, um, but playing, the sa playing or repeating the same old stuff again, or just take a break for now uh, and say, hey, that's it for now. Um, we can't play live anymore. We just really need time for us uh, to think about the band, to, to be, yeah, just to, to find each other again. And yeah, it's it's that's kind of a cliche, but we want to find the joy in music again. No, I, I you should understand. I I respect your decision, and it's just in my head I'm thinking, oh my god, this moment maybe like 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 the Beatles are splitting up right now, and have a chance to convince them not to split up. I will change the whole <laughs> history, you know. Like this is like really important. So I'm gonna bust your balls about this. Yeah, a couple but, but, but Ringo already left the band. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Substitute yeah. it with another Ringo. I don't know if it's possible. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, that's that's also a thing. I mean, I mean, we were talking in the last couple of years during Corona, um, uh, because it always came up. Um, if if somebody is not a, not available at the time, um, should we play shows with a substitute or not? And we just decided for us, um, Paris or Caravan is just the four of us. Uh, it's not a not a possibility to to play with a substitute because we have been together for 14 years and uh, most people don't know it but uh, three of us know each other since kindergarten um, I joined the other guys at the age of I don't know 13 14 and since then we were, we, I got we've, to know you yeah. I think we're 12 13 yeah. around yeah. and and us other three yeah. know each other since kindergarten so. yeah yeah and we we just uh, mm -hmm. have been together all our lives basically and just doing music together uh, all of all of our lives and the the yeah to be honest the main thing that's always been there is music and playing together uh, in different bands and yeah and for the last 14 years with paris or caravan for now it's just um Maybe you just like uh, like uh, maybe you just need to change the music style a little bit. Okay, for that you yeah, need to go that, out. That can only happen if we take time for ourselves. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So. I understand. You okay? You might come back. I, I I see that you might come back. It's not going to be the regular style of Pearl so Caravan. You're going to be a a a, a, a marching uh, band of jazz uh, cabaret style. I'm pretty sure you can do that. I'm not really sure if we uh, really changed the style of music that we're playing, um, but it's, I it's, can't. I can't. Yeah. I'm not the best guitar player, so I, yeah. I simply can't change the style of music. Uh, it, it's for, for me. It's already hard to change the key, so um, that's the reason why we're changing guitars on stage because they're tuned differently. <laughs> because I just no drop tunings to play. <laughs> okay, I see. I see the pattern there. You need to go. You need to have some break. So that you see that you can't play in other bands, so you come back together in the band. <laughs> no, of course you're a good. Well, officially, we are we are finished for now, yeah. and we'll just see what happens. We take our time, maybe rehearse some time, maybe just two of us or three of us or yeah. all four of us. Just when time allows it, we're going into the rehearsal room and find some some joy in the music again. Yeah. This is like the saddest interview like uh, I've ever had because I. Didn't expect any, any of this. I mean, do, do do you tell people? I don't. I don't think you tell people. You know, like yeah, yeah, of I course we do. Yeah, yeah, we do. <laughs> Nobody knows. Uh, to, that's, that's, that's the only. That's the only reason <laughs> because there are so many people coming to our shows at the moment, uh, because uh, it's the last shows. <laughs>
Okay, I, this time I did really bit bad research. I focused on 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 personalities and then every, how everybody's doing and everybody's playing and stuff, you know. But I missed the main point that the band doesn't exist anymore. Cheers to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a pretty harsh start into the interview. Hey guys, how are you doing? Yeah, pretty good because we're breaking up. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's uh, it's uh, a quiet. You need some quiet time to be alone, to wander out, to 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 find yourself again yeah. to meet other new people yeah, yeah but you know um i don't want to meet other people yeah I'm, i want to meet you but yeah. maybe not 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 rehearsing for gigs yeah. i know i know you you want to go on the summer vacation for th sabbatical for three four months somewhere in thailand whatever just to find yourself India, uh, I'm shit. Thinking about three, four years more. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's getting harder and harder. <laughs> but but uh, our last album also took us four years. So, well, that's true. We're, we're basically, not the fastest. Never been. Yeah, and actually, like with each album, you change a lot. It's like the first album. I mean, even before the first album, you had your like home recordings and stuff. Then you were with uh, Pantare, you know, and then you did with the Doctor Zone and all the stuff. Next one's gonna be a new label, I guess. No, maybe not, but because um, actually that's that's my label as well. I know. Sooner, um, uh, I'm I'm working in the music industry. Uh, I'm doing this full time. Um, I think we're going to, to um, yeah never keep change keep, label. Yeah, yeah. yeah keep <laughs> continuing uh, to keep our rights and do it on our own. Yeah. Yeah, but well, it's it's the way. If you can do it on your own uh, and keep all the all the label things and rights and stuff in the bands, uh, it's the best way to go. Like everybody. Like when I interviewed Clutch, that's how they did it. When I interviewed uh, Blood Sucking Zombies of Armor Outer Space, uh, same thing, and many other bands do the same thing. So you're doing the right thing. It's just you're doing it really slow, and you're canceling shit. So fuck you guys. I mean, in a good way. Sorry. It's just like you know, like a bit, a bit, a bit, a uh, bit. No, sad, 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 sad. <laughs> so sad. <gasps> You're gonna be so sad. I hope you're gonna be sad, so you can write new songs about sadness. Uh, sad songs is not our, our thing. I think <laughs> that's what you're going to do. You're going to like uh, just just blues and acoustic guitars now. <gasps> blues is perfect. Sadness, blues, stuff, acoustic guitars, whiskey. Yeah. Do you drink alcohol? It happens. <laughs> it happens from time to time. Mostly when we're on tour. <laughs> no. Um, do you drink on tour? Yes, <laughs> uh, I think ever, nearly yeah. everyone does. If, if the tour is long, of course yeah. you need your sober days. Yeah. But generally speaking, we, we're not doing long tours anymore. So if we're playing a yeah. gig tonight, I drink beer. Yeah, of course. What's your favorite drink on tour? Uh, beer. Beer? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's basically beer. And beer. And coffee in the morning. Yeah. yeah. I'm asking because I mean I ask this uh, in every interview, almost every interview, because one, early in the beginning, one band said they like to drink margaritas on tour. Okay. Margaritas, come on! After that, you need to be asking we this question. We don't get margaritas anywhere, so yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe we are too underground to get uh, margaritas served on stage. We we get gin tonic a lot. Well, they don't get it served on stage. They just find it. They they just like when they are on tour, they try to drink margaritas because it's fun. Actually, they're a sad, sad band. But when I interviewed them, it turns out that they're really fam funny people. So. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yep. Yeah, I think drinking is just a part of it. As long as it's, if it's in, if as long as if you're able to keep play. up and play. Um, but we are far away from being a straight edge band, to be honest. But it's not like we are. Yeah, totally. Whatever, wh whatever makes your music uh, the way it is, then yes. Okay, so uh, the band is falling apart. Uh, no turning back. I can't convince you. Um, let's imagine that you stay together. <laughs> What would be the third album sound like? I would like to try to make it more proggy. I, I tried it always, but it never works out the way I think. But that's the beautiful thing about writing songs together. I come in, into the, the rehearsal and present a riff that's nearly unplayable. Then we say it's for, unplayable. For the <laughs> and then it's gets broken down, there come new ideas and stuff like that. I would try to, to make a, a third album as proggy as possible. And then Bertie tells me that we make it, I don't want to say simpler, but uh, uh, more more listenable, <laughs> more, more easy to listen and more... 
more commercial friendly. I mean, yeah. he's, he owns a label, so he's like uh, into this he, commercial he, he shit. That's what he's talking about. So. And he is very good at this. Yeah, I mean, you've been in the business for a long time. You've been a tour manager. You've been organizing stuff. You have signed. Um, mm. I mean, I know your tough shit and stuff. Well, all the catchy <laughs> riffs are written by him. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Never no. been able to, to, to write the riff that's really uh, catching your ear. That's not true. And it's, yeah, as you already said, I think it's always the, the mixture of uh, four different uh, individuals just um, playing together and uh, creating something new. Um, and even if I'm coming with an idea and uh, practically uh, presenting a complete song to the band, uh, it's just exactly. sounding um, the way it is because um, everybody's uh, just um, putting their parts in, in it. And yeah, and that's the beauty of it. A completely written out song yeah. is not accepted by the other three. Yeah. So it's a con constant conflict. That's the best way how to write songs. So we honestly couldn't answer the question, what would the third album look like? Because we don't know. I know. I mean, it's. Uh, yeah. but it, it, I need to ask yeah, about your... It, 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 far off the second one, I guess. But, yeah. uh, but it's, what, what it's really like, uh, I couldn't tell you. I just think um, that we would uh, like to... Or me personally, I would like to... Um, try to, to spin the idea of the, the whole uh, story that we had with the first two albums um, and keep it going to the next one. So because basically we started as the self... Uh, so that speaks for my proggy idea. And who went to outer space and now we're on the second album. We've uh, been back on Earth and uh, just trying to figure out ourselves. And then the third, maybe we're going to another planet. And then yeah, yeah, and the third, we, we're, we're yeah. leaving Earth yeah. again. We're in space. Yeah. We conquer black holes or something, so yeah. it needs to be proggy. Yeah, that's it. We conquer black holes. The, the, Which that's the, just the, gave ourselves the idea for the yeah, third album. That's the, the title. It's going to be the title. Uh, that's what I do on this conquer podcast. Uh, trust me, <laughs> like on every podcast, I, 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 I help 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 conquerors. musicians to get make that's it. it. Yeah. The black hole conquerors. That's yeah, the title. Yeah, because you talk about it. Yeah, we never talk about it. That's why I'm here. I uh, I'm like your therapist, but yeah. for free. Feels like it. How much do you ask for an hour? A beer, okay. uh, whiskey, yeah. beer, whiskey, yeah. whiskey, beer. I think that's manageable for us, for our budget. <laughs> um, actually, when you were talking about like going away and trying out stuff, because uh, last time I interviewed Tiger Cup, they had a similar uh, story. Yeah. So they were not feeling it, how it was going, the band, and they decided to, okay, let's like kind of quit it. Not quit it, but like yeah. pause. So what they did, they... Each went into their own projects, played what they wanted to play, proggy stuff, mm. I don't know, psychedelic jazz. <laughs> exactly my cup of tea. Yeah. Exactly a cup of tea. <laughs> and then they got their uh, kicks, you know, uh, they, got, they got what they wanted. And then it, it, it uh, cleared in their head what the original band was about. And it was easier for them to get all back because they already had like, they know what they want in other bands. They know what they want in this band. And bam, they have a completely, like, feels more different sound. I mean, they're more confident about who they are at the moment. Yeah. So highly possible that it will happen to you. So uh, now I start, I'm not so pessimistic. Uh, just like, I'm, I'm, it's real time. I'm just thinking about it. Uh, it might, it's, it's highly possible that you will return uh, more confidence regarding the sound of the Paris of Caravan. Maybe, yeah, but... Uh, uh... As I said, I wouldn't be too sure that we actually do return. You, you're fucking killing me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, uh, uh, Have you discussed it like properly? I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. we did. Actually, of, officially, in, in, internally in the, in the band. Where's the fucking press release? Did you do the press release? Yeah, yeah, we, we did the press release, everything. We sent it out. Fucked up. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't find it though. It's yeah. fine. It's fine. It's fine. All right. So what are your plans for this year? <laughs> Yeah, to, um, be, to be honest, at, at the moment, we just really want to enjoy um, the last three shows that we're going to play. Uh, and yesterday we had actually the, the first one in Salzburg. And it's just so great uh, to meet all the people who supported you over the last 14 years. And uh, there, yeah, basically there, there are so many people who, yeah, who are just following us from city to city and now uh, you meet them again. And yeah, it's it's just really really fun to talk with all the the fans and friends and everybody about uh, old stories and be able to to share a beer with them after the show. And 
actually it's the so far it's the the, the best tour we ever did so far um <laughs> But it's always the, the stuff, and uh, yeah, and, and that's a good thing because uh, it would be really sad if we're saying, "Hey, we, we're quitting this this thing," and nobody's <laughs> going to show up because everyone's like, "Yeah, fuck this band. Um, they didn't release anything new in the last three years," um, because basically that's it. Um, no, but it's really, really fun to meet all uh, all those people and see uh, familiar faces in the crowds. And it's going to be emotional for us as well. I mean, uh, tonight we're going to play here in the arena. It's almost sold out, sold out, and. Um, yeah, a lot of friends from us are living here. I'm living here in the city. Um, part, actually, I've all been of, here yeah, for a short all, period yeah, of time. Yeah. All of us lived here, and uh, we have a lot of friends here. It's going to be a big party. Um, we just want to celebrate our songs. We rehearsed uh, all of our old tunes that we didn't play for ten years. Yeah, uh, not all, yeah, but, but the important ones. Yeah, and it's just just fun, and it's going to be a great, great party. And afterwards, yeah. We just take a well-deserved break, and I think you're doing like the like, like the big like Kiss, for example, the Farewell Tour, number one, then the Farewell Tour number two, three, four, oh, and five. We discussed it, yeah, yeah. exactly. That. Yeah, they said the same thing. Yeah. So actually, we we um, the, the the plan is from going to from underground clubs to to stadium shows in the next uh, step. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure you can do it <laughs> with with, <laughs> with this with this strategy. It's possible. So what you're going to do, you both do, because I can't ask other people independently now after the band is done. What, what's your plans? Uh, How can we like follow you and stuff? Because now we need to follow you independently, I guess. There's no uh, musical projects. I mean, I, I do have another band as well, uh, but it's also a band that's not playing live. It's called Holm. Yeah, I really like that band. It's a little, it's not so rock and roll focused but uh it's more melodic and stuff folky. yeah a little folky a little psychedelic sometimes a little bit more rock uh yeah it's just just really great music but it's also music that we are um um writing in different cities uh apart from each other so it's not a, a project that's going to be um yeah the next big life thing at least not at least for now yeah at least for now um yeah but apart from that i'm still continuing doing music um Working with other musicians and bands, that's yeah, it so far. And you're going to be occupied with the label, with the other artists yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of work. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Because I'm doing really a lot of booking for, actually, um, yeah, I'm mainly a booker for, for other bands. So um, there, there's no, no turning back from music for me. Um, there was, it's, it will always be the biggest part of my life. Yeah. Uh, I don't actually have any real plans. Uh... I got a neighbor who's a really, really good blues guitarist, so I kind of play with the thought uh, to look into that kind of genre. I mean, I, I can play a simple blues, of course, but he's he's really good, so I, I think I can could learn something from him. But it's not like we're starting a band right now or something. So it it seems like that you really want to like make a pause with like uh, I don't want to say like music also, you know, but in a way just like. Take it relaxing. Like. Yeah. Focus on family because my second child was born in, in June. Congrats. It's, it's not uh, the time to tour extensively. Well, I mean, we all understand that. It. It's just, I am such a bad researcher. That's why I'm so surprised. <laughs> I think if, if, if we were professionals, then okay. But uh, we don't make any money with this band. That's, so that's, it's that's also just the thing. Hobby. I mean, it, it was never about the money. Um, you don't play in oh, a band yeah. for 14 years and continue uh, releasing songs uh, if it's uh, about the money. Uh, that's always... Uh, I, I think being in a band uh, is just uh, the greatest pleasure that you can have musical-wise, uh, especially if you're just playing with uh, your best friends and be on tour with them. Uh, yeah. Especially and, if you yeah. don't have to do it for the money. Yeah. If we would be professional, there's, there's much higher pressure behind it. We are, we're just having fun evenings. All right, guys. I don't want to bother you. You're going to play a show in half an hour, or like yeah. one hour or something like this. So uh, thank you very much for your music. I'm not saying that like, we're like goodbye as like you're dead or something like this. I'm pretty sure you, it's still possible that you'll return. And maybe not in this band, but maybe in other bands, in other projects as musical and stuff. But at least, I mean, people would like to hear that. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but uh, thank you very much for what you did. Uh, uh, I, the, like the, uh, the music that we have is already like, really good and we'll have it forever. 
hopefully. So that's awesome. Uh, and uh, I wish you from all the fans to you uh, all the best and with all your like beginnings and stuff and have a nice uh, 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 journey. Yeah. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. But Thank you. In the end, uh, which song would you put at the end of this episode, the, the Paris Hill Caravan song? It's a good introduction to your band. Transformation.
Thanks, Parasol Caravan. And thank you, dear listener, for staying till the end. Don't forget to follow this podcast if you dig it. Rate this show on Spotify and Apple. Apple Podcasts. More stuff to come. Until next time, bye.